lesson four in DC power and this is our little practical demo so DC power objective so what are we going to try and achieve with this little demo we're going to connect a basic circuit with two lamps that are switched independently from each other we're going to observe the effects of power consumption by changing the applied voltage and the amount of load. We're going to apply Ohm's law modeling system to calculate the power that's being used. Then we're going to observe the lighting effect of the two circuits dissipating different values of power for different uh, amounts of voltage. And we're going to measure power consumed by that load, our lamps, using a voltmeter and an ammeter. So before we do anything we've just got to do a little bit of risk assessment. Uh, electric shock, we are only playing with voltage up to, up to a maximum of four and a half volts so electric shock is not likely to be a big issue. Um, even though low voltages can produce some high temperatures uh, that shouldn't be a problem each maybe from the heat of the lamps but again we're not going to get that warm and trips and falls keep all our leads and things neatly up on our bench so we don't trip and fall over things so here's our a basic circuit so let me explain the circuit to you our basic circuit has lamp one lamp 2 and we can switch them independently with switch 1 and switch 2. We've got a voltmeter in the circuit measuring the total voltage used across the circuit and we've got an ammeter down here in the circuit measuring the total current in the circuit. Then up here we have a point and I'm going to be able to move this point just to use one battery so when I've got the lead there we're only on 1.5 volts when I've got the lead connected into here of course we've now got three volts because I've got two one and a half volt batteries connected in series and then finally when we're connected to here we've got about 4.5 volts So we'll be able to turn the lights on one at a time and then turn them on together creating different amounts of current therefore varying the load and being able to vary the voltage over three voltages. Another thing we need to take particular note of at the moment are the lamp ratings and I just got this off the packet that the lamps come in. They're two and a half volts rated that's their typical rating. They should draw something in the order of about 0.3 of an amp or 300 milliamps each. Therefore they will dissipate about 0.75 of a watt or three quarters of a watt. And their internal resistance when hot will be 8.33 8 ohms. So that little table of data as it relates to our lamps and our loads is something we need to keep in mind as we go through our little prac. So here's our circuit description. Uh, you can see here at the moment I've only got uh, the 1.5 volt battery connected up. So this voltmeter connected in volts measuring our total voltage across the supply. This one here is our ammeter measuring the current in amps on here. This is uh, switch 1 and this is switch 2 and tucked in here we have lamp 1 and lamp 2 and our batteries at um, 1.5 volts when we've got this one connected in 3 volts when we add this one and then 
5 volts when we connect this one in. So we have three voltages available to us. We have a voltmeter measuring the voltage. We have an ammeter measuring the current. We have two lamps so that we can vary the load and we can switch them independently. So we're going to take our first reading now. So here we are at uh, 1.5 volts with lamp one. And you'll notice we're pulling 1.525 volts and about 200 milliamps or 0.21 of an amp. And you'll notice that the lamp itself is reasonably dull. It's illuminated, but it's not as bright as it could be. And of course, our second lamp is not illuminated at all because it's off. So the next thing is to do is to switch on that second lamp. So let's switch on the second lamp. You can see the uh, voltage has gone down slightly because our load has increased. Um, the reason the voltage drops down slightly is because the internal resistance of the batteries. Yes, would you believe it or not? The batteries actually have their own internal resistances and this does affect the amount of current that flows as the load increases. So now you can see we have both lamps are on. The voltage has changed just slightly, come down a tiny bit, but it's pretty well close to 1.5. And you'll notice that the current has doubled, which is what we would expect, of course. We've now got two lamps, so we're now pulling uh, 420 milliamps. And both lamps are illuminated, but both lamps are reasonably dull. So the next thing we're going to do in our little experiment is we're going to up the voltage. And you can see that uh, I've now moved the voltage leads here and I've put an extra piece of wire in here. So we're now using um, three volts. So total of uh, three volts now being applied to the circuit. Our voltmeter is reading 2.86, so just under three volts. And we're pulling 0 0.29 or 290 milliamps. And you'll notice that the lamp is certainly much brighter. So lamp one, quite bright. Lamp two, of course, here is still off because we haven't switched it on yet. So as we now move across and switch in the second lamp, um, what do you think might happen to this current here? If we're going to put the second lamp in and we're going to effectively halve the resistance, we should see the current double. So let's go to the next slide. And as we anticipated, the current has doubled. We've got both lamps are now bright and the voltage has dropped a little down to 2.69 and again that's because of the internal resistance of the batteries. So as we continue now let's uh, let's pump the voltage up to the maximum at four and a half volts. So you can see quite a considerable change here again. We've now got 4.5 volts because you can see I've now looped in all three batteries. We're pulling or got a supply voltage of about 4.182 volts and with just one lamp on we're pulling 360 milliamps or 0.36 of an amp. You'll notice that the uh, lamp one is very bright now, very bright. Lamp two of course is still off because we haven't switched lamp two on. So again when we now put the turn the second lamp on 
we should see this current here go up by two again twice as much current so our, it's going to go up to probably a little over 700 milliamps and our voltage will probably just drop down a fraction as we increase the load so let's go to our next slide we've got two lamps on very very bright our voltage as you can see now has dropped to 3.88 volts so just under 4 and our current has doubled to 700 milliamps and L1 and L2 are very very bright so the amount of power has increased considerably so here's a summary of the results what I've done here is I've just averaged the nearest voltage on the left hand side so this voltage I've just gone the nearest average so for the first set we had 1.5 and you can see a clear times 2 between the currents here but what do you notice about the power so here's the theoretical power for one lamp the theoretical power is 0.75 of a watt the actual power was 0.3 of a watt but that's because the lamp was designed to run at two and a half volts to give that so this is what we would expect what happens when we double the amount of current even though the voltage was the same or double the load you'll notice that the power went up by two so we've also got a times two here has also increased when we've added the extra lamp which just makes sense doesn't it? just simple common sense we've got now got two lamps on instead of one so we've got twice as much power but they are dull you'll notice it dull dull because we're still running at 1.5 volts when the lamps are actually designed to run at 2.5 let's move down to our next pair let me change the color of the pointer so it's a bit more option a bit more obvious let's go to red now we've increased our voltage to 2.5 remember our lamps were designed to run at 2.5 and this is 2.7 you'll notice again our current does double between the lamps which is what we would expect and look at our wattages almost exactly spot on so if we're running at the right voltage the actual power here was 0.78 and the power determined by the manufacturer 0.75 so right in the Goldilocks zone and again we've got two lamps on giving us 1.54 watts and with two lamps on should give us 1.5 watts so exactly spot on so this is the normal operating zone of our lamp let's now move up to the four volts and so this one this time so four volts was kind of the average again when we doubled the load we doubled the current times two the lights became very very bright we were putting out we calculated we we're putting out 1.44 watts from our meter readings so 4 volts times 3.6 is 1.44 watts 
and the lamp is only built to put out uh, 0.75 so we were almost uh, close to double the wattage for the lamp the lamp would probably get too hot after a while and fail and of course we put on two lamps and we get a times two increase in power which is what we would expect so what are some of the observations so the first thing we need to think about what happened to the power consumed when the voltage was doubled that is when it moves from 1.5 to 3 volts what happens to the power so let's do that little comparison on our table and so 1.5 here and when we double it to 3 volts which is this one so at the moment we're going to ignore the bottom of the table so we'll just scribble that one out because we, we don't want to we don't want to do that one what happens when we have one lamp on we get three watts what after we have one lot lamp on and we've doubled the voltage we've increased the power considerably haven't we so double the voltage increase the power considerably similarly we can compare these two again the power has gone up considerably increase the voltage and the power goes up can we verify from our results that P equals I squared R and that it also equals V squared on R so we know that our I'll just turn the pen back on again we know the resistance from our ratings is 1.8 and let's say we take our our current for the first lamp so let's take this first one so just take this as an example and we have 21 milliamps or oh sorry 210 milliamps squared multiplied by 8.33 and we get 0.36 and what was the actual value we got was this one here we estimated well we not we estimated we actually the actual was 3 watts and by taking the resistance and the current we get the same value or very very close to it so 0.36 compared to 3 watts very very similar so that verifies that I squared R relationship and you can do that with any of the numbers in the table you will end up in the same place that I squared R does equal the power what if we took V squared on R so we know we have applied 1.5 volts so what about 1.5 squared divided by 8.33 so why don't you grab out your calculators and do that calc and 
And when I do the calc, I get 0 0.270. So again, very, very close to our 3 watts. So just under 3 watts. So again, we can verify that V squared divided by R relates directly to the power. So that ends our prac and observations on DC power.